We're nearing the end. Don't go away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you, as always, from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Indeed, we are coming to the end of this epic battleship build. And it is a little bit sad, but it has been so much fun. I can't even begin to tell you. And it's not over yet. We have this entire video where we will wrap up the ship. And then we have one more video where we're going to get to take a close, detailed look at the final project. So we still have ground to cover. It's not over yet. So let's get into it with a smile on our face. Let's get going. Okay, so we're picking up on the battleship where we left off in episode 5, where we had really done most of the uh, the big assemblies, put everything onto the ship and stuff. Now we're really into the final parts here. Uh, as you can see, I'm working on the catapults. We've got the one catapult at the uh, rear of the ship, and then we have the other one on uh, the rear of the ship on top of the... Uh, the, the big guns, which is kind of a cool thing if you think about it. Um, I'm putting the catapults in, but at this point, I kind of have forgotten that I still need to build the airplanes, so I'm going to be doing that here shortly. So I've already built this one, and you can see it's, it's made out of clear plastic, which was really kind of a cool idea uh, because it made doing the canopy a whole lot easier. So... Uh, I've already built that one, and I'm going to take you along as I build airplane number two. Now, the photo etch kit does come with some parts for the airplanes. It's uh, got a little thing for the engine area, and it's got uh, a little cockpit insert that you can put in there so that when you see through the canopy, you can uh, actually see some kind of details. And there's little struts and parts and stuff. And uh, the couple things that I've picked out that I definitely want to do are the cockpit interior because I, I want you to be able to look in the canopy and see something in there and uh, also the little thing up in the front of the motor and the airplane's gonna look pretty cool so basically I get out the clear sprue and I cut all the parts off and uh, really it's gonna be simply gluing it together but the first thing I need to do is get the cockpit part Done. So I'm going to cut that out of the uh, photo etch tree and I'm going to shape that and now I'll put that to the side and I can go ahead and start building my airplane. This almost feels like a, a model kit within a model kit. It's kind of weird. Um, but the, the, the airplanes have a nice little bit of detail to them, and they're going to look great sitting on the catapults. And uh, I think the whole thing is kind of crazy, you know, how they've got the cranes, and I guess the idea is that the airplane comes back, lands in the water next to the ship, and then they crane it back on and put it back on its catapult. And so anyhow, I'm going to get all these parts cut off, cleaned up, and we can start gluing So the little photo etch cockpit, it really it doesn't, it, it's not that detailed, but it is enough to, to intimate that there is a, a, a place where the pilot would sit and fly the ship. And basically I'm just going to put little bitty drops of my CA glue in there and then I'll just tuck this inside the upper part of the airplane and let that dry and then we'll build the airplane around that.
Okay, so now it's just a simple matter of taking all the parts of the airplane and gluing everything together. Really, the toughest parts are going to be the little pontoons, I think. Um, but otherwise, this is a pretty uh, simple assembly. It goes together really nicely, and it makes a cool little airplane. This sort of reminds me of a while back when I did the uh, um, Red Baron uh, show car build on the channel and you know I had a special edition set and it came with a little uh, Red Baron airplane to go with it and I never built that and so that's how I, I kind of feel like that and it's reminding me that at some point soon I'm gonna have to go back and build that little airplane to go with my Red Baron uh, Tom Daniel design show car Okay, so I'm just going to use a couple paint bottles as an ad hoc type uh, stand to work on this airplane. And I'm just going to try and get these uh, pontoons glued on, try and make sure they're, they're straight and level to the aircraft and, and looking the way they're supposed to look. Now, here I am using the quick setting uh, extra thin cement, and the reason for that is because it is a delicate operation. I want it to bite pretty quickly, and then before it really, really dries up, then I can just kind of tweak it with my fingers and push on the pontoons to make sure they're straight and looking the way they should. So. I gave it a lot of thought about how am I going to paint these airplanes and keep the glass clear. And uh, I finally decided that what I was going to do is I was going to use liquid masking. And uh, I wasn't sure how well this was going to come out. I, I've never really used liquid masking with any great success. Uh, but there just weren't a lot of great options here because we're talking about some really small stuff here. So. I've broken out my jar of liquid mask and I'm going to paint this on the front and rear canopies. Now, fortunately, the uh, aircraft part of this kit, it's got pretty well-defined borders to it. And it was a lot easier to paint this masking on than I thought it was going to be. So I went through on both airplanes. I put a coat on the front and rear canopy of both airplanes, let it dry. Then I went back and put on a second coat. And, you know, on that second coat, I was dabbing it on pretty thick. And so I felt like that was going to be enough. And I crossed my fingers, put them aside to dry before I headed over to the paint booth. Okay, so both airplanes are built. The mask is on the canopies and dry, and I need to paint these now. Now, fortunately, I can just paint them in mass, just one straight color, and I'm going to use the navy blue of the ship, but what I did is just to give it a little bit of a difference is uh, I mixed in just a drop or two of white just to make it be a different shade uh, because, you know, it probably wouldn't be the same color as the ship itself. And in fact, I probably should have used a completely different color here. But, uh, you know, that's up to you. I think they came out great and it wasn't worth fighting over. So I'm just going to airbrush this and get the entire airplane in navy blue before I start doing the detail painting. Okay, moment of truth, guys, you know, guys and girls, you know, hey, listen, when I say stuff like that, when I say guys, you know, I, I'm including everybody in that comment. I'm not, it's just the way I talk. It's not intended to say only guys are going to build a battleship, okay? I don't know, you know, everybody does their own thing. So when I say that, please don't take offense. Anyhow, 
Guys, it is the moment of truth here, and I've got a little pointy pair of tweezers, and I'm going to start picking at this uh, window mask and see how it goes. So, so far, I'm happy that I am able to get a hold of it, um, get a little flap lifted up. I was worried that, you know, it, I'd just be picking at this thing for hours trying to pull this mask off. But so far, what I'm getting is I am getting... Uh, a little corner up and it is coming off pretty evenly where where it should come off and it's actually it's kind of working I'm, I'm really excited right now so now I'm just trying to get a hold of it with my fingers and pull it the rest of the way off and then I could just pick off any little bits and sure enough most of it comes off and there I've got a clear canopy and I gotta tell you I am crazy excited about the way this has worked out. This is going to be great, man. Okay, so I'm painting the bottom of my aircraft white. I don't know if it's supposed to be white or a very light gray. I don't know, but I'm going with white. And so it's the bottom of the airplane, the bottom of the center pontoon, and the bottom of the wings, and the bottom of the, uh, the wing pontoon. So I'm just brush painting that on using a flat paint. And I'll give it a couple coats because after all, I'm putting this white over a fairly dark gray. And one coat just isn't going to get it. And uh, we'll see what we get. So what I'm finding is that it is actually covering very well. Uh, it's going to need two coats, but it's covering way better than I thought it would. And I'm also finding out that this is way easier to do than I was imagining it in my head. Uh, it's going really, really well, and I think it's going to look great. So we'll just motor right through this, finish this up, and then we'll go ahead and uh, move forward with the ship. So now it's finally time to drop the anchor chains in. And these were like a copper color, so I ran them through my bottle of uh, Midas Black Max. And what it is, is it's an oxidizer. And all I got to do is just dip the chain in there and the chain will go kind of a blackish color. So I did that, let it dry. And now I'm just routing it on the ship. I've cut it into the right lengths. And uh, with a little bit of super glue where it drops down into the uh, bowels of the ship to go to the anchor. And uh, gluing them in place and it's looking really great. I can't tell you how, how awesome real chain is for the anchor chains and and just how much life it gives the ship here so this is an exciting moment for me so another thing if you're a, a naval guy or a, just a ship guy who maybe knows this stuff or whatever and something i don't understand there are four places for anchors but everything i have shows that there were only three anchors being used on the Arizona and one of the other holes and, and pathways for the anchor chain and stuff was just empty and I, I don't know why that is. Um, maybe you know, maybe you can explain it uh, in the comments below. I'd, I'd love to learn something here and find out why that is but be that as it may I'm going to follow along and just put in the three anchors and the three chains. You know, sometimes you just uh, you're you're into the project, and you're really excited about the way things are going, 
And that's where I'm at right now. I, I'm, I'm really exciting, and I'm, I'm feeling it. And I'm, I'm closing in on the end here. And so I, I just bolted forward and glued the airplanes onto the catapults, but I forgot to put the decals on. So now I have to do it with them on the ship, which is not ideal, but hey, it is what it is. So uh, we'll get the decals on and we'll move forward from there. Honestly, as I'm even editing this video and I'm watching this, I'm looking at the detail of this ship and it excites me. It really does. This is such a fun build. I had such a great time with this. Um, highly recommended. And I don't think you have to be a Navy guy or a ship guy to really get a lot out of this build. Um, the Arizona is a very important part of American history, so there's that. But if you're any kind of a model builder, this kit is not only fun to do, but it's spectacular to look at. Just to be able to look at this thing is wonderful. And where I'm going to end up putting it in my uh, my home, um, I'm going to have to get some lights or something and, and have some lights shining on this so that you can, uh, you know, see all the little details and stuff like that. Because, I mean, look, look at in this picture. Look at the, 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 the detail that this ship brings with it. So fun. So I really would have loved to have done cloth flags and I think they're out there but I, I don't know how to find them or get what I need or anything like that so I'm going to use the decal flags that came with the kit but what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply them to some foil and um, make sure that you use a good setting solution so they stick good to the foil because otherwise uh, the decals don't like to stick to foil very well so use a good setting solution to make sure they stick and then what I'll do is after they're fully dry I'll trim them out then I'll fold and glue them around a piece of string and then I can use that string to hang the flags where they go on the ship and once all that's nice and dry, I come back later with a little pair of tweezers and I just start adding some little bends and ripples to the flags and they'll, they'll have a little bit of life to them. It makes a much more realistic looking flag. Um, again, I, I would have liked to have had some cloth ones, but even cloth ones I don't think would have been able to have the, the little ripples and waves in them that these are going to have. Um, so this is a great way to do things like that. Uh, foil can be your friend. Now the kit comes with a lot of flags, not just the uh, the bow and the, the stern of the ship flags and, and stuff like that. It comes with tons of signal flags and things like that. Um, I didn't put any signal flags on my ship. In fact, uh, when I talk about the rigging, I'll, I'll show you some of the things I did and some of the things I omitted. So we'll talk about that there. But yeah, I only used really the two flags. So I ordered a bunch of cord and line for doing the rigging. And uh, I ordered a bunch of stuff called Easy Line, which is a different colored, um, kind of stretchy, plasticky cord that uh, is, is really popular in the shipbuilding scene. And I got it in black in a couple different thicknesses. And you'll, you'll see some of that here in a minute. But what I'm working with here is um, different diameter um, strings that look like rope. They, they, they look really great. What I did is I'm making 
the ropes, I guess, that they would use to um, hold the ship to the docks. You know, when they get it against the dock and how they pull the, the, the lines over and they put up that loop over the the things, you know, and I'm sorry, I don't have the jargon here, but anyhow, so I made some of those, and what I did is I took the thicker ropes, and I made a loop in it, and then I lashed that so that it had a really great realistic look, and you'll see that in part seven when I do all the close-up f shots, and then mimicking something I saw from another builder, um, I draped a couple of these ropes onto the ship uh, at the bow, I probably should have something in the back, but you know, I don't know this stuff. So there are some great images out there of the Arizona, including some of its rigging. And I'm going to put a link to that in the description for you guys. But really, I'm just kind of punting here, uh, especially with the rope part. And I know there should be more, but I don't know where it should go. Like I took one piece and I coiled it up. And I put it over like those, uh, I guess those are like a sonar thing or something that's attached to the side of the the uh, two cannons. And so I coiled some up and, and hooked it over that. Just I don't know if that would actually be there or not. I thought it looked good. It added some more detail there. And I, I don't know anybody who's going to look at the ship and go, that doesn't belong there, that looks stupid. So um, I, I just did some stuff with this cord to try to add some visual interest here uh, based on some things I saw other people doing and uh, I think it works out really good I think it really does um, you can go I mean seriously you could go for days doing this stuff you know y you really could uh, I did what I thought I could do without causing this huge problem or breaking stuff or whatever and once I was at that point, I just stopped. So I had two cranes um, that are like right by the lifeboats already in there but I never glued them in and that ended up being a great great thing because I was able to pull them right back out put them to the side because as I told you in I guess part five I screwed up making the lifeboats and I didn't put the lashing on them that I wanted there so now I'm having to go back and do that now and that's this is also where buying different thicknesses of the cord comes into play the 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 mooring lines that's it the things on the front mooring lines i made those out of the thickest cord i had and then i used the thinnest cord to lash them you know to lash the little loops in there um here i'm using the middle size cord to do some lashing to hold the uh various lifeboats to their their uh stands and like i said it would have been so much easier to have done this before i put the boats in i didn't so I'm having to use tweezers and a lot of caution here. And I'm just going to kind of do a crisscross thing right in the middle of each stack. Um, hooking it around, a little dot of glue here and there. And uh, we'll call it good. Um, but it was really a good thing that I hadn't glued those cranes in. Because it might have been impossible to do this if they were still there. So I was able to pluck those out. And now I'm just going to tie these boats down to their uh, their stands. So, tying these boats down was a, a real issue. Like I said, I should have done it earlier, and I didn't. So, I pulled the cranes out, and I, I started lashing the first set of boats down. And it actually went pretty well. I was actually pleasantly surprised, and I thought to myself, hey, you can do this. 
this this is gonna work out okay it's not the best but you'll be able to get this done so I finished the first stack of boats and then I started looking at the ones in the middle there and I'm like how in the hell am I gonna lash those down how am I gonna do this so I was really full of dread at this point because now I've already committed because I've done the first stack of boats and if I don't do them all, they're going to look weird. So I've got to push forward. So yeah, that middle stack was even harder. Uh, trying to thread the cord through and get a hold of it and pull it through and not break stuff. But with a little caution and moving slowly, I was able to get it done. And it worked out great. But man, don't do it this way. So here's a much better view of me trying to, to lash these boats down to their, their stands. And you can see how it's going. And you can see why the, this isn't probably the best way in the world to do this. But And, and also, here's the other thing. I'm, I'll bet you dollars to donuts that this is absolutely unrealistic. This, If they even lashed them down, um, they probably wouldn't have done it the way I'm doing it. But... Again, I think when you're building a model like this, you have to take into consideration your lot in life. I don't know anybody in the Navy, okay? Um, at least nobody who's going to see this ship. And I, I just know that there's nobody going to come over and go, well, you know, that, that's all right, but man, you got those lashed down all wrong. It, it looks terrible. It, it's not going to happen. People are going to see this and go, look at the detail of that. Look at the, the little ropes holding the boats down and stuff. And, and that's what they're going to say. And so it really doesn't matter. I, I know there are concourse uh, model builders out there who are doing every little thing right. Well, that's not me. Okay, I'm building something that I love and that I think looks amazing. And you, you'll see it in some of the railings that I don't paint. And uh, the lashing and some of the rope work and stuff. And, you know, it is what it is. Do what works for you. Now it's time for the easy line, and the reason they call it easy line is because it really is easy to work with. All you do, so l let's say I want to go from the, uh, the mast at the front of the ship to the top of one of the uh, uh, towers here. So all I got to do is put a little dot of CA glue where I want to start, like I'm doing right here. And then I just kind of touch the easy line to that spot, and it, it will stick pretty quickly. Once that's nice and dry, I can pull it to where it's got to go, gently, put a little dot of CA, lay it down over the CA, hold it for about 15 seconds, and let go, and it will stay there. And I can put just a bit of tension on it because it's stretchy, so it won't be all saggy and, and sad looking. So this stuff really works very good. Um, it's kind of imperceptible in some spots but it adds so much to the to the build i really think it's worth doing at least at some level now there are from the drawings that i'm going to reference in the description you'll see there's a couple zillion lines there's no way i could have pulled that off uh, i think i just would have ended up making a bigger mess um so you know I did what I felt I needed to do to make it look great without going to a point where I started risking doing damage. So that's how I took this on. But anyhow, Easy Line is fantastic and it's really going to help you with this part.
Now, I wanted to specifically include this in this video just for my sister because I know she's going to watch this video. Uh, so, Judy, this is for you. Um, as I'm doing the easy line, I've got a lot of it in place, but, you know, I try not to trim until right at the end there um, because I want to make sure everything's dry. So I had all these lines run. Everything was going really well, and she had called and was distracting me, and when I went to trim one line, I cut another line, which ended up running to another line, which ran to another line, and then they all fell apart. And so I totally blamed her for that. Um, it was her fault for distracting me and making me cut through uh, things I shouldn't have cut through. So Judy, thanks a pant load for that uh, and for making me have to go back and rerun all those lines. Uh, I guess I'll forgive you. Maybe. We'll see. So as I said, I put the uh, flags, I folded the foil flags around a piece of cord and glued them closed so that they would stay there. And then I could glue the cord onto the various places where the flags would go so they had their lanyard for raising them and lowering them. Uh, adds a little bit more realism and uh, get those on there. And we are right at the very end of this build. And I gotta tell you, at this point, I wasn't stopping. I, I'm the kind of guy who who drags projects out, but at this point, I've been working on this ship for quite a while. I was really excited about it, and I was really in the zone, and I was going to just keep moving forward. So, on a side note, if you remember back to uh, part two, I think, I showed you how I made a display base for this. I bought a base and some pedestals and how I drilled into the ship and I uh, JB welded the nuts into the, the hull um, so that I could go and put the ship on the base later. It worked like a charm. That worked so good. When I, when I was ready to put it on the base, I just had the, the bolts up through the base and through the little pillars, and I just kind of set the ship down on there and just turned the screws until uh, tightened it all up. Beautiful. It looks fantastic. It went together fantastic, and I was able to keep the base out of my way until I was ready for it. It worked great. Total home run there. So all I had left to do was a few bits of details, uh, little bits of touch-up paint, uh, you know, maybe uh, straighten some things out and whatnot, uh, like some of the railings. I, I think at one point I knocked off a ladder or two. I had to glue back into place. Uh, but essentially, the Arizona is done. I am feeling so gratified. I love this thing. It looks amazing, and it was the funnest model I've built in a long time. Really had a great time. I highly recommend the kit. 
a bunch of the add-on stuff, especially the wood deck. I can't tell you enough about how the platform worked, uh, the display platform worked, and it really came out fantastic. Now, I hate to do this to you. I'm not going to show you the ship today. You're going to have to wait another week. In part seven, I'm going to take you through and show you this thing from stem to stern, every little detail. I'm going to set up an entire area to shoot photos so I can get every little bit of detail here and you'll be able to see this thing and all the little things that I did here. But anyhow, that's going to be it for today and for the build. We'll see you in part seven when we take a look at the finished product. Well, there it is. The Arizona build is done, and it is epic. I love it. It looks great over here in my room. I am so happy, and I had a ton of fun. Totally love it. I hope you loved it, too. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss one of my model builds. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love to hear from you guys. You guys are the best. Anyhow, we have one part left, and we'll show the whole thing front to back, so you've got that to look forward to, and then we will start building something new. It's going to be a lot of fun. Anyhow, it's time to get out of here. I do hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying, be good.